Okay, let's do another example of uh, dimensioning in AutoCAD. Um, we have here a, an object uh, that uh, we're showing in three views, front view, right side view, and a top view. Um, you can see that uh, there's an inclined surface here, um, a large hole, and then a smaller hole going perpendicular to that. And then through the bottom, we have a rectangular slot, okay? So um, we want to start dimensioning this and we're going to um, use our, use our two-step process of uh, first dimensioning the sizes of the individual geometric shapes. So let's, uh, like we did on the other ones, let's make an accounting of those shapes. So, um, and again, this, you, you could do this on paper. You would probably do it on paper, not in AutoCAD, but I'll do it here so that you can see what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, so uh, first we have, let's take the easy uh, thing first. We have the large cylinder. So we have a positive cylinder, okay? Um, and that's this cylinder right here, a positive, whoops, I should add that in there. Hold on, a positive, that's, that's not a positive cylinder. Let's get this right. Sorry, that is a negative cylinder, and we'll put L for large, okay? Um, and then we have another negative cylinder right there, and we'll put S for small. Okay, um, and then uh, let's just go ahead and do this, uh, this slot. So we have a negative, whoops, Let's get that in there. We have a negative prism, right? And that's that slot right here. Uh, and then we we kind of, you know, we'll, we'll say that we have one positive prism here and then another smaller one on top of that. So we have a positive prism and I'll put L. Um, actually, let's put, let's call it base. These are your own names, you know, so it's just so you can, um, and we'll put that uh, top and then we have you know one more feature and I'm gonna call this a negative uh, wedge right so that's an inclined surface right there but really um, we cut if you imagine from the positive prism that's the base here um, like we cut this out the notch we've also cut this out so that's gonna be a negative um, I'm going to call it a wedge. It's kind of an inclined shape, but you know, the, the, we can call it a wedge. Uh, and again, you know, we're just doing this for accounting purposes, just so we can track this. Okay. So now let's go through, now that we have these labeled and, and identified so that we can cross them out, let's go through our workflow for getting our, um, our, uh, dimensioning started. So we have the drawing finished, right? So we want to go ahead and select the scale that we want to use. So I'm going to go to the A3 border here and um, we're going to make this one to one. Whoops, there we go, one to one. And that's about as good as we're going to get it. Now, ignore this stuff on the outside here. That's, that's for uh, another video that I'm going to do right after this one. Um, where I'm going to change it to a section view. Um, but, uh, but for right now, we'll just position it right there. So we got a scale of one to one. I'm going to lock it. All right. And then I'm going to go to model space and I'm going to set this at one to one and it's already set at one to one. So that's all good. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go to, uh, let's go ahead and change our layer to the dimension layer. We can go to annotate, make sure we have the correct style. Um, we want an annotative style and this is a metric drawing. So ISO metric is what we want to use. Um, and now we're ready. Okay. So we're ready to start dimensioning. So let's just go ahead and we'll start, um, from the top down here. So we dimension, um, negative cylinders, i.e. holes with a diameter in their circular view. So, uh, I'll pull this out here. Now it's going all the way through, so I don't need a depth. And I'm not going to worry too much about its location because I can always change that. You know, um, a lot of that is just going to depend on how it looks here. 
right? So I'm not going to worry about the exact location. So negative cylinder. I can go ahead and um, dimension the depth of that because I know I'm going to use reuse that dimension for the positive prism top. Okay, so so nevertheless, right now that's the depth of the hole right there. Um, so that is that done. Now we got the negative cylinder, the smaller one. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Circular view. Um, let's, uh, let's pull it out here. Remember, it's okay if we cross the extension line with the leader or the dimension line with the leader. What we want to avoid is a nearly vertical leader or a nearly horizontal leader. So if I wanted to pull this out here, that would be fine. Um, you know, if I wanted to pull it, I think I'll just pull it out here. For the time being again i'll you know make a determination whether i want to change that and then the depth of that hole and i'll i i'm going to put this here because i know i'm going to reuse this or use this dimension again is going to be shown right there okay now alternately i could also do this right so understand that this is the same dimension same feature that we're dimensioning in this case it's you know, uh, gee whiz, it's kind of arbitrary which one you want to pick. Um, and I think I like this one up here. Um, but, uh, you know, I always can decide whether I want to, you know, nix this one and put in this one. But for the time being, I'm going to make a decision that, that will go this way. So that's the negative cylinder here. Okay. Now we have the negative prism. Uh, and that's going to be uh, pretty easy. We need a length, width, and a height, right? So we have the length here, or whatever you want to call that, the width. We'll put this here for the height, making sure to get the lines, uh, choose the right line so we have a little gap there like we should. Um, do not dimension the hidden lines. I, that's, that's a big no-no. Um, and now the length of this maybe we'll dimension I think this is a really good view because this is this follows the contour rule we can see kind of the overall shape of the object and that's the depth of this okay so um, so we got that in there beautiful now we have the positive prism for the base length width and thickness you know so uh, we already have the length here um, we already have the length uh, the width here so now we just need the thickness and um, we have two options. We can dimension that there or we can dimension this here, okay? And please understand this right here is a terrible, 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 horrible dimension because it breaks the contour rule uh, in every way possible, right? So that dimension is a huge no-no. Um, so there we go. Length, width, and thickness right there. Okay, so moving along there. Let's just continue on. Um, now we have the top. Okay, um, and uh, we, we have one dimension already there. We have the other dimension already there. So really, we only need this dimension. And here we're going to have another choice, right? So we can, I'll, I'll show you what we can do. We can either do this dimension. I'll, I'll put it right there so we can differentiate the two um, or we can do this dimension okay now the so so we either we have a choice between this dimension or this dimension we can't do both both dimensions along with this 16 would be over dimensioning okay so we have to choose between one or the other um, and because, again, we don't know the functional relationship of the features, we don't know where this fits in a machine or in some other kind of assembly, we're kind of going on partial information. So I'm going to fall back to the idea that it's good to have an overall dimension. Okay, overall dimension meaning I want to know how big this whole thing is. And the 32 gives me that. Okay, so in the absence of other information, I'm going to go with the 32 and putting it between these two views is perfect, right? Um, 
So, so look at that. That that's already done there. And the last thing is the negative wedge. And there's really only, you know, we have the width of the wedge here. The only thing left to do is figure out how we're going to dimension this. And there's a couple of different options, right? We need to give either two linear dimensions or a linear, linear dimension and an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of show you all the different ways. So we can do this and this okay or we can do one of these 15 or 10 and this dimension all right i'll pull this out here because there's not a whole lot of room here i guess yeah we'll pull this out here okay so um again which way we should ultimately decide to go with is based on the function and mating relationship, which we do not know. So we're left to arbitrarily choose one or the other. And we have three choices. We have the 10 and the 15, or we have the 15 and the 34 degrees, or we have the 10 and the 34 degrees, okay? Now, in this case, what I'm going to opt for um, I'm going to opt for the 15 and the 10, okay? Um, I think that that's going to be fine. If you if you were doing this and you opted for the 15 and the 34, or the 10 and the 34 degrees, or even the opposite angle, that would be fine as long as, you know, you, you have those two. So this defines that the, the angle, so to speak, the, the, the negative wedge right there. Um, and then that's it. Okay. So now we're done with this. I can move this out a little bit. Um, and so far, so good. Right. Um, it's okay that there's only one dimension here. Right. Um, we don't have a requirement that we have, um, you know, a certain number of dimensions in a view. In fact, we could have a view with no dimensions. Right. Views are to describe the shape. Dimensions are to, are to describe the size, so they don't have to necessarily go hand in hand. All right, so um, so we're done with this, um, and now let's move on to the location. Right, so the only thing we need to locate, we need to locate the negative cylinder right here. Right, and really the 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 way that we're going to locate it is. Um, we, we have a couple of options. We can go here, but really we should locate it with its in its circular view. So I'm going to go from here to here, right like that. Okay. Now, if you're if you're saying to yourself, well, "Wait a second, isn't that a negative? Isn't that a hidden uh, center line for a hidden hole?" Well, yeah, it is. Okay, um, it is. But they share the center, so there's no way we could get around that. Notice that the 24 also locates the smaller hole. So this dimension is doing double duty. It would be entirely wrong if you also did this dimension. Okay. Um, so just, just for, we don't want that in there. Oops. We don't want that in there. All right. Uh, the, the location of it in this direction. Well, we have a center line through that, so that's going to be good to go. And in fact, just to be clear, I'm going to stretch this center line out past that. That way we know that it is, and I don't think that's on the right. Yeah, it is. Um, that way it's clear that this is this circle is centered on this face, the 38. Okay. Um, and in fact, I'm going to also stretch this out like that because I think that will also make it clear uh, that everything is centered, that the left and the right are the same sides. Okay. Um, now we do need to locate the, the smaller cylinder here, and I'm going to locate it from the back surface like so. Um, and maybe I'll, we don't want these to be too crowded. So we'll go like that. And in fact, I think I might just pull this down like this. There we go. That looks better. Um, so now the negative cylinder, eh, we don't need to do anything there because it's bisected by the center line. So that means that the negative, excuse me, negative prism is centered as well. 
So we don't need to dimension that. That's understood in the same way that a center mark um, tells us that the that the circle or the hole or the cylinder is centered on on that. Um, so guess what, people? That's it. Okay. So that's that's the power of using this two step process, right? I am absolutely certain that I did not miss any dimensions. Okay. That I have everything accounted for. The only thing that I could do is decide one way or the other with dimensions like this 38 down here instead or maybe with the angled the inclined surface here going with an angle or one of the other dimensions here those are all based on information that we don't really have okay everything else this is completely dimensioned okay so we can go here and we can we got this set up and then that's it okay so in the next quick video, I'm going to um, change the front view out with a section view and talk a little bit about how maybe the dimensioning would change. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.